So hello there, this is RP Fridays 29. This time we have a third part of the session of modern design experience, a little intro. My name is Roman, for those who don't know me, I'm an RPA developer for the last, last five years working with UiPath and also I take care about all our RPA projects in Robot ICT company where I work. It's based in Czech Republic and we are ready to help you with your automation projects. If you will like this video, please uh, give, us a give it a like, consider subscriptions, and if you will have any technical or non-technical questions to the topic, please put them in a the comment. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. So today I will show you a uh, next activity from the modern design experience activities, and it will be the activity type into. Let's go to it. So maybe just quick note on what is modern design experience. In your project settings in UiPath Studio, you can turn on or turn off so-called modern design experience. These are some different new activities that are improved and they have some new features and new properties. That's what I'm explaining in this series. So if you want to enable them, you need to go to your project settings and turn it to yes. From last first and second tutorial I was using an uh, activity called use application slash browser. I'm doing this demonstration on a browser, on Firefox browser and on the website of our company. And today I want to show you the activity type into. So, so let's take a look at it. I go to activities, search for type into, and this is the activity. I will drag and drop it and let's explore it. So first, as you know, and I was talking about it in a previous RPF Fridays about object repository, you can use your previously selected so-called descriptors from object repository. So you are able to drag and drop them uh, straight to the activity or you go and indicate uh, what you need in the browser. So I will go and indicate it. Once I click indicate, I am in advanced, let's say target indication screen, which I was talking quite a lot in the previous chapter, in the previous part. So if you missed it, then I, I, I make sure that you watch the part two. I can indicate my target like this and check the selector. All right, so by default, I'm having fuzzy selector on because it's a browser, um, that's fine. But I don't like the selector. Why? You can think about it. It has an input HTML tag and a type text, which is fine, but there is nothing that would uniquely identify this input field within the page. So in case there will be some new field above it, it could fail. So what I will do, I will turn on the good old UI path, uh, sorry, UI Explorer, and try to improve the parameters of that selector. So now when it's loaded, I'm searching for something that is uniquely identifying it within its parameters. For example, this name, your name, See, there is no other field like that. Let me just validate it, highlight it as a good practice, and then save it. Now it will be again green and all and nice, and I will go confirm. Again, if you want to know more about this one, then switch to the previous video where I'm explaining it. All right, it's so easy to use that. So let's check the properties. There are the common properties, which most of them, I guess, are self-explanatory or they are already familiar with you, like the delay after or delay before or continue on error. I was also talking about it in previous videos. Um, one little thing to note, the modern design activities, they are using the for times or timeouts, they're using seconds instead of milliseconds. So don't do that error to write, I don't know, 10,000 milliseconds. It will be 10,000 seconds. Here in the input, if I uh, collapse it for a while, we see two things, secure text and text. So the type into activity is also serving us as the old activity that was uh, type secure text, I think. So it's possible to use a string variable for the text and or, or, or the secure string variable, secure string data type for the inputs. So you can use one activity for entering uh, just general strings or general texts or passwords. If we, if I fill this in, I will type, I will type my name. Uh, in case I, I'm hard coding an, a password somewhere. 
it's possible to toggle the password mode. That's also a new thing here or there. However, don't you dare hide and hardcore your passwords in production automations, right? For some testing, fine. But other than that, maybe not that good tool to maybe teach you bad habits. Also, it's possible to add some key and that, that works as expected. Then there is the whole target part that is working about selectors, fuzzy selectors, native text, wait for page load, and so on. Please watch the previous video. I covered everything and I don't want to double duplicate the, um, the content. This all also is about verify execution. Again, go one video back and watch it. Input and output element, that's quite clear. But let's check what is here new in the options part, these last properties. First of all, we can set up the input mode. We can set it up as to be as the same as the app or browser settings. So if, if I go to this, use browser, uh, Firefox, uh, then there is input mode set to simulate or hardware events or Windows messages and so on. And this will set it up for all the child activities. However, now when I put the key, I have an error that I cannot type special keys using simulate input mode because the simulate is set it up through the use browser activity. So I can actually change the input mode for the one activity where I want to do some exception by clicking, uh, by using hardware events, for example, which will solve the error. There is also one neat little button that you may be missed because I did and that's this little blue one that will automatically set the recommended input method for the indicated field. So once your element is indicated, you can try to click it. And now UiPath will try to apply all the methods and uh, come with the most suitable method. Let's see what it will do. All right, so the input method was set to hardware events, but what will happen if I will delete the hotkey so no need for sending a hotkey it should go to sim simulate or to the other one yeah the input method was set to simulate how cool is that so there are other options that i will just briefly introduce for those who maybe not know them the activate one which is by default true will bring forward the element before we, it will type into it it could be useful in some cases same as the click before typing which is also by default set to okay by default set to none but you can let's say you have a field that needs the click before it will allow you to type right or allow the robot to type so you can set up a single or double click at the element of the field before you will uh, before it will type some text the delay between keys is also handy I think it is like 0 0.1 uh, second by default, so 100 milliseconds between each key. And so it's typing kind of fast, kind of slow. Yeah, maybe faster than your grandma, maybe, maybe slower than you. But uh, imagine you have a field that is having a drop down and each letter will activate search into something and it will create a drop down and narrowing down the results. Sometimes the robots are too fast and sometimes it will, uh, it will, it will crash the system. Or sometimes, for example, if you want to hit enter and go to a selected or filtered uh, result of the dropdown, maybe it will be too fast. So you can put, let's say, one second delay between each key. It will be slow, but it will be precise. It will be working. The empty field here, by the way, is now, also, it's also you can set it up here, is telling us that UiPath is using just some basic tricks to uh, clear a field. If it's a single line or if it's a multi-line, which is a new thing, uh, it's using some shortcuts. For example, this one, right? So uh, imagine that I want to clean this uh, single line field. This is also a field, right? So it's a and, oh sorry, and, shift home, and delete. So it's there is no magic by uh, in in this uh, empty field property. And now the magic, it's not magic. Oh, it's a little magic, and it it's revealed, right? And then the deselect at the end. Let's see the documentation. It says that. This option adds a complete event after the text entry in order to trigger certain UI responses in web browsers. Okay, I will leave it up to you to think about it, what you want. So it's time to run it. And after a while, there you go. That's it. That was simulate typed. It was fast and precise. 
So I guess that's it. It was a short lesson today because most of it you already learned in the previous lessons. And now you know a little bit more about typing too. I hope this was beneficial. In case you have additional questions, type them in the comment. And I want to say thank you for watching and thank you for subscription. If you want to know a little bit more, I put a link to the article in the video description. This is a link to our Robot ICT community forum where I am publishing my articles and also you can ask there if you have any troubles. I'm trying to answer to all of them in short periods. So in case you don't get your answer, for example, on UiPath forum, try there and I will make sure to give you some ideas and hints. That's all from me. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the best, all the best for your robots and as always, happy automation.